architecture institutions in Ogun State should maximize their educational resources and optimize their human capital to realize their potential. This is coming from Governor Bikung Amosun while meeting with the governing council of Alabisi Abanjo University at Goiwoye and Tai Shalari University of Education. Begin to see ways and means of improving the lot of to get more. I don't know. I'm not saying. I mean. Uh, that we we'll just be going around to say money, money, money. No. Maybe our consultancy outfits there, our management sector, even our engineering bit, things that we are doing, we can patronize them if they know that yes, they can do well. We'll continue to do our bit. We'll look at what you've said. We'll definitely and certainly increase from that um, 40 million. Mm -hmm. Now switch to sports. Here's Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Millicent. Nigeria's blessing, Okagbari, has qualified for the final of the long jump event at the 2017 IWF World Championships going on in London. Okagbari leaped 6.51 meters to place second in her group behind Britain's Lorraine Ugen, who posted 6.63 meters. However, Commonwealth champion Esse Brume failed to meet the qualification standard with a jump of 6.38 meters. With less than a month to the commencement of the Afro Basket Men's Championship, Nigeria Basketball Federation has named Alex Mora as the new head coach of the D-Tigers. According to the statement released by the Federation, the decision to appoint Mora was born out of the desire to give qualified Nigerians the opportunity to make history with the national teams. Mora guided Cape Bird to the 2013 Afro Basket Championship, where they defeated Nigeria's D-Tigers by 79 to 76 points. Arsene Wenger has confirmed that Alexis Sanchez will miss Arsenal's opening Premier League match of the season against Leicester after suffering an abdominal strain in training. Sanchez sustained the injury during a training session ahead of the Community Shield on Sunday and Wenger admits he is unsure how long the 28-year-old will be out of action. The Chilean international is also likely to miss the club's first away game of the campaign against Stoke City on August the 19th. And that's a wrap on Sports News. Millicent will be back with the rest of the news at 10. My thanks, Ayo. Two people have been confirmed killed during confrontation with the police in Mathare, Kenya today. The police say they attempted to attack officers with machetes, and which was when the officers opened fire on them. The government has denied anyone was killed in election-related violence in Nairobi, and the opposition challenger, Raila Odinga, has rejected the results which put incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta in the lead with 54.36% of votes compared to his 44.76%. The Electoral Commission has denied final result will be announced tonight. Kenya's capital, Nairobi, got off to a slow start this morning. The Electoral Commission's website shows Kenyatta with 54.8% of the vote against 44.3% for opposition leader Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga claims the election was hacked. What the IBC has posted as results on the presidential elections it's a complete fraud based on a multiplier that fraudulently gave Uhuru Kenyatta votes that were not cast. The election commission says the voting process was free and fair and it was investigating whether or not its computer system was hacked. Meanwhile, clashes have erupted in the western city of Kisumu, a stronghold of Odinga, chanting Uhuru must go home and burning tires. The government has dismissed the agitation. Let us refrain from any activities that will unduly um, endanger the security of uh, the country or uh, unduly affect individuals and groups of people. Odinga's comments have raised concerns of unrest over the results in Kenya, something international observers have preached against, hoping this time Kenya can have the most peaceful of elections. And Channel Television will continue to keep an eye on uh, the elections there in Kenya.
U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has warned North Korea to cease any consideration of actions that would lead to the end of its regime and the destruction of its people. He was referring to Pyongyang's threat to attack the U.S. territory of Guam following a fire and fury threat from President Donald Trump over its recent test of an ICBM. He said the North's actions will be grossly mismatched by America's and would lose any arms race or conflict it initiates. And the main news again. Federal High Court in Lagos today strikes out suit against seven banks accused of withholding funds meant for the Treasury single account. The court also ordered government to pay each of the banks a sum of 200,000 naira in damages. Associate Economic Rights and Accountability Project today accuses three past administrations of squandering 11 trillion naira on par projects between 1999 and 2017. The group is also asking the EFCC to probe prominent Nigerians involved. Also tonight, Kenya's main opposition candidate, Royal Odinga, disputes outcome of Tuesday's presidential election, says Electoral Commission's computers were hacked to favor incumbents. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for being a part of it. I'm Millicent Walker. Do have a good night.